My name is Art Craig, and I'd like to tell you about a new kind of drug that you've probably never heard of before. This kind of drug is already saving the lives of some children with rare diseases, and it could stop the coronavirus. The kind of drug is called an oligonucleotide therapeutic, and I'm a member of the Oligonucleotide Therapeutic Society, an international group of scientists around the world who are developing these technologies to treat disease, and we'd like to let people know about them and how they could stop the coronavirus. We already know a lot about the coronavirus. We know that it infects our cells through a receptor with the spike protein on the surface of the coronavirus. And once inside our cells, it injects its RNA into the cell, hijacking the cell and forcing it to make many copies of the viral protein and more copies of the viral RNA, which then form new viral particles that come out of that cell, infecting other cells in our body. And when we cough, they can go and they can infect other people too. So we have to stop this process. And we could stop it either at the surface of the cell before the virus comes in, inside the cell at the RNA, or targeting the protein. And traditional drugs target proteins, but proteins have very complex structures. There's no simple rules that they follow. And traditional drug programs take a long time, 10 years, and have a high failure rate. We can't afford all that time in the setting of a pandemic. So we need to look to the science that tells us that proteins are spelled out in the genetic code made up of only four letters, A, C, G, and T, which are called nucleotides. And these follow simple rules. And the recipe for each protein is contained in the code of RNA molecules. And all of those recipes for all of the proteins in our entire body that we'll ever need in our life are contained in the DNA in our cell. And we can think of that as a kind of master cookbook. Now, with all of the scientific advances in recent years, we can now read these nucleotide letters. And with new advances in oligonucleotide technologies, we can write the letters by making synthetic oligonucleotides out of these nucleotide building blocks. And so now, knowing these rules, we can actually target disease at the level of RNA. And we can identify a single disease-associated RNA and make an oligonucleotide therapeutic to bind to that RNA and prevent the protein from being made. And this doesn't change the DNA cookbook, it just acts at the level of RNA. It sounds like a great idea, and it was first proposed 40 years ago. It took a long time to make it work, and at first it was failure after failure. But in the last four years, there are now eight oligonucleotide drugs that have been approved to treat diseases where there were no treatments before, like spinal muscular atrophy and Duchenne muscular dystrophy, where these drugs are saving lives. And using these technologies that have been developed, hundreds more programs are in to treat many other diseases, and many new companies are using these technologies in that way. But what about situations where there's a unique disease that only affects one person? This is Mila's story. Mila was six when she was diagnosed with Batten disease, a rare disease that's fatal and there's no treatment. Dr. Tim Yu at Boston Children's Hospital read the sequence of Mila's DNA and found a mistake, a mutation. And he realized that that could be treated with an oligonucleotide therapeutic. And working together with members of the OTS, they developed one for Mila in under a year, showing the speed of these technologies now to treat that. But there are many more people like Mila who could benefit from unique drugs just to treat their disease that doesn't occur in anyone else in the world. And so there's a foundation and lorem to now bring these customized oligonucleotides to more patients who could benefit. And the OTS is working with other stakeholders to bring these technologies to more individual people. So if these technologies are powerful enough to do this for a single person, what can they do 
do with the coronavirus. Scientists around the world and biotech companies started applying these oligonucleotide therapeutic technologies to the coronavirus. And so we can now block the virus by more than 90% in cells in a Petri dish. Will that be enough to stop the virus in a person? We don't know. But some of the best laboratories and biotech companies with decades of experience in developing these technologies against other types of diseases and in other areas of the body are now taking those tools and trying to apply them to stop the coronavirus in the lungs. More testing has to be done. It has to be tested in mice and then monkeys before it can be tested in humans. And it may not be ready to treat humans during this pandemic, but scientists will work on these tools and continue developing them because there will be future pandemics where the research that we do today can help. In the meantime, there are other approaches we can take to stop the virus. We can block it from infecting cells with antibodies to the spike protein that will prevent the virus from binding to the receptor and getting inside our cells and infecting them. And people make these antibodies naturally when they fight off infection. That's what our immune system does. When it detects a virus, it makes antibodies to block it from infecting. And we can purify those antibodies from the blood of someone who's had the infection and give them to somebody else to treat them. That's plasma therapy, but it's temporary and you don't get enough antibody from a single person to treat many other people. So another approach is to mass produce the antibodies and biotech companies and pharmaceutical companies have the technologies to do that. But again, this is a temporary protection. And so to get permanent protection or at least a chance at permanent protection, we need a vaccine. So for a vaccine, there are two key ingredients that we need. One is the protein target that we want the antibodies to be made to. And for the coronavirus, that's the spike protein. The second thing we need is a danger signal. This is something that tells the immune system, make antibodies against this. Because otherwise, if you just inject a protein without a danger signal, the immune system really doesn't make antibodies. And we've learned a lot about the danger signals that our immune system uses to detect viruses and other kinds of germs. And it turns out that these are actually hidden in the RNA and the DNA of the viruses. It's like another code than the genetic code. But through a lot of work by many scientists around the world, we now know enough about that code that we can make RNA and DNA with these danger signals from viruses, and we can use them to make our vaccines work a lot better than they otherwise would. And so one approach that I want to tell you about using oligonucleotides is an RNA or DNA vaccine. And in this approach, we take the recipe for the coronavirus spike protein that we want to make antibodies to, and we have it in an RNA or DNA that contains that danger signal. We package this to look like a virus, and then that's injected in the person as a vaccine. Our immune system detects the danger signal and thinks, oh my God, this is a virus. I better make antibodies against this. And it reads the RNA recipe for the protein, sees the protein and makes antibodies against that protein. And this approach actually has already been tested in humans with other viruses and two doses induce most people to make antibodies. These appear to be safe and they should be safe because they're using the natural pathways that evolved in our bodies to protect us against infections. And these pathways are activated many times during our lives when we fight off the viruses that we get every year. None of these types of vaccines have yet been approved, but multiple different companies now are using these technologies and are in some of these are already in clinical trials. Others are going to be entering clinical trials very soon. And you're going to hear a lot more about these RNA and DNA vaccines. And these vaccines can be produced in amazingly fast time using these oligonucleotide technologies. 
the sequence or genetic code for the coronavirus was shared by Chinese authorities on January 11, 2020. Within two days, Moderna, one of the biotech companies developing this approach, had already designed an RNA vaccine. The following month, they shipped the first batch of that vaccine to the NIH to begin clinical testing. The following month, volunteers started receiving the vaccine. So in the next months, we're going to be learning about the antibodies that these people are producing. Will they be high enough to protect them? But this is moving forward very rapidly. The second vaccine approach that I want to tell you about is called a viral vector. In this case, what you do is you take the recipe for the coronavirus spike protein and you put it into a harmless virus that already contains the danger signals. There aren't any approved viral vector vaccines yet, but several companies are already developing these. CanSinoBio was the first company to get a coronavirus vaccine into clinical testing in humans. They're already starting phase two. The Jenner Institute at Oxford University has already Already tested this kind of approach against a different coronavirus, and it did show some protection. And they also reported that in monkeys, this vaccine that they've now engineered against the coronavirus does protect monkeys against SARS-CoV-2, and they're starting clinical trials as well. So again, we need to find out how well would this work in humans? How high are the antibodies? Will they be protective? But these are approaches both based on sound science, and even though they haven't been approved yet, the odds are high that these will work in humans to induce antibodies also. The third approach is to take the protein and an oligonucleotide danger signal separately. These can be mass produced. Our pharmaceutical industry is very good at mass producing proteins. We can mass produce the danger signal and then we mix them together in a vial and that's the vaccine. And this type of approach has already been approved in two different vaccines that are marketed. This is the first one, Heplosav. And the advantage of these vaccines over traditional vaccines that were used in the past, the traditional hepatitis B vaccines take three doses and more than six months to, to protect people. By adding a danger signal to the vaccine, you reduce that to two doses and two months. That's something that could work in a pandemic to protect people very quickly. And again, the vaccines are safe because these danger signals represent the signals that our immune systems have evolved to recognize when we're fighting off infections. And we're using pure uh, synthesized DNA or RNA to activate these in a controlled way. Dynavax has made the oligonucleotide from their approved vaccine available for use in coronavirus vaccines, and multiple companies and organizations around the world are now taking that approach forward as well into the clinic. So in summary, oligonucleotide therapeutics are changing the world. They've already saved the lives of many children with rare diseases, and they're going to save many more. And they have a good chance to stop the car the SARS-CoV-2 virus. But it is going to take time to develop vaccines, even though these approaches, I think, are very likely to work and to come up with effective vaccines. And so until those are available, we have to keep trying to flatten the curve. Scientists and companies developing these technologies are going to continue the work on improving them even after this pandemic is gone because they can help many more diseases. And there will be future pandemics and we will have better technologies then to treat them faster and even more effectively than we can today. So I hope you've learned something from this and uh, enjoyed it. And if so, please share it with a friend. If you're interested in learning more, follow the OTS on Twitter or check out our website where there are many more information sources on these amazing oligonucleotide therapeutic technologies.